In this task, you'll explore the effects of various projections on the characteristics of a map. We'll focus primarily on the shape and area distortions, and we'll examine projections useful for mapping on the global scale. In Lab 2, you learned how to add data to QGIS Desktop, and here I've got QGIS Desktop open. In this case, we're actually going to open an existing QGIS project. To do that, I can either click the Open button here or go to Project Open. In either case, navigate to the course materials, go into the Module 3 Lab folder, and into the Data folder. And we're going to open up World View. And I'll just click Open. So what I've opened is a QGS file, which is basically a QGIS document. A project file such as this contains information about the map, such as the list of layers, where they're stored on the hard drive, the coordinate system, the symbology, labels, any custom tools, map elements, and much more. You've learned the basic layout of QGIS Desktop, but let me introduce a few new terms to you. These individual layers in the Layers panel are also known as themes. So here we have two polygon themes, circles and land, a point theme, cities, and then a line theme, graticule. And a graticule is a term for coordinate lines displayed across a map. If these blue circles were displayed on a globe, they'd be perfect circles. Here you can begin to visualize the distortion in the projection by the distortion in the circles theme. On this map, a projection has not been chosen in QGIS Desktop. The software is using latitude and longitude measured in geodetic decimal degrees, which displays a simple rectangular coordinate system in which the length of one degree of longitude is consistently equal to one degree of latitude. In QGIS Desktop, when a projection has not yet been selected, distance calculations remain true. This is because the software computes distance using the spherical coordinates of latitude and longitude along a great circle, just as if you were actually measuring at the Earth's surface. Here, although a projection has not yet been chosen by the user, the display is essentially a plate carré projection. On a projection that preserves shape, the polygons on the circles theme would appear as true circles. In a plate carré projection, linear scale, area, and shape are all distorted increasingly towards the poles, as demonstrated with this circles theme. So the circles will be used in this exercise for illustrating the aerial and shape distortion that occurs with various projections. It visually demonstrates the skewing, tearing, and shearing that occurs with certain projections. So now that we've gotten through that explanation, first we're going to examine the map units and distance units set for this unprojected map. To do this, I'm going to go to the Project menu and open Project Properties. Once this is open, I have various tabs on the left-hand side, and these are all different properties of the project. I'm going to go to the CRS tab. And I'll notice that the selected coordinate system is WGS84, which is an unprojected coordinate system. So now I'll go ahead and click OK to close the project properties. Now we'll do some distance measurements on this map, and we'll compare these to distances with other projections as we go forward. So to do this, I'm going to go up to the Attributes toolbar, and there's a Measure tool that allows us to measure lines, areas, and angles. I'll choose the Measure Line tool move this out of the way. I'm going to measure the distance between Atlanta and Alice Springs. To do this, I'm going to click on Atlanta with the left mouse click, drag it down to Alice Springs, and right click to finish my measurement. So this measured distance of you know a little more than 25,000 kilometers is not the actual distance between Atlanta and Alice Springs. When we had the project properties open, you saw that on-the-fly CRS transformation was turned off. In this situation, QGIS, in this case, is measuring directly between Atlanta and Alice Springs along my measured line, heading from Atlanta east down to Alice Springs. What it should do is measure to Alice Springs by heading west from Atlanta instead of east. This is the shorter distance. However, QGIS doesn't know that the world is round, so to speak, since on-the-fly transformation is turned off. With it turned off, it treats the coordinate system as a selected world-based coordinate system. This view does not maintain spherical distance measurements and distorts shape, direction, and area. 
So let's tell QGIS that we are, in fact, working with a world-based coordinate system and wish to measure in a round world. So I'm going to close my measure tool. I'm going to go back to my project properties. It remembers I was on the CRS tab, and this time I'm going to enable on-the-fly CRS transformation. I'm going to choose WGS84 from the list to make sure it still maintains that, and I'll click OK. And you'll notice down here in the lower right, the coordinate system is listed, and with, with on-the-fly transformation turned on, it'll say OTF in parentheses. So you can always use that as a quick guide as well. So I'm going to again use the measure tool and redo that measurement and see if I get a different result. So again, I'll left click on Atlanta, drag the box down to Alice Springs and right click. And now I'm getting just a smidge over 16,000 kilometers. This is the actual distance between Atlanta and Alice Springs. So this view maintains spherical distance measurements, but distorts shape, direction, and area. So now let's change the projection of the map to Mercator. So again, I'll close my measure box, go to the project menu, project properties, and there are a lot of different coordinate reference systems to choose from. So to make this easier, I'm going to use this filter box, and I'm going to type in the EPSG code 3395, which will identify WGS84 World Mercator. EPSG codes are unique codes for each projection and coordinate system. So now with that set, I'll click OK. And our map goes into a Mercator projection, which is a conformal projection, except at the poles, it has straight meridians and parallels that intersect at right angles, as you can see. The scale is truest along the equator and becomes more distorted at higher latitudes, as evidenced by the increased size of the circles. So you can see the circles stretch or increase in size at the, at the poles. So this Mercator projection was designed for marine navigation, and it gives straight lines on the map. Angles are preserved. For global scale thematic maps, however, the Mercator has too much aerial distortion for accurate use. Mercator is best when used for large scale areas at low latitude. Small scale maps have much distortion of area and distance. So the Mercator map is much less desirable for mapping continents than other projections, as it has significant distortion and can promote geographical misconceptions. In general, rectangular maps are not recommended for use in mapping the world. Equivalency, the property of equal area, and conformality are better preserved using non-rectangular maps. In task two, we'll examine a map projection more suitable for mapping the world.